Samuel Ikini Ori Ikeji. From verse 7 to 8. Lati Ese Ikeji Si Ikejo. First Samuel chapter 2. Samuel Ikini Ori Ikeji. From verse 7 to 8. Ese Ikeji Si Ikejo. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and he lifted up. Oluwa so di talaka, o si so di oloro, o re si le, o si be so ke. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dung hill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the laws, and he has set the wall upon them. Ogbe talaka soki, lati inu e rupe wa. Ogbe alagbe soki, lati ori ya atan wa. Lati ko wan jokwe lu anwa ma alade. Lati mu wan jokun ite ugo. Nito ori be, anwa aye si olu wani. O si ti be aye ka ori wan. Divine repositioning. Ishini nipo lato kiwa. Position matters. Ibo tiye yon wa oji shek pataki. Position matters a lot. Ibo oji shek pataki gidi gidi. The head is better than the tail. Ori osan ju iru lo. That's why Deuteronomy 28 verse 13 Deuteronomy 28 verse 13 Deuteronomy 28 verse 13 Deuteronomy 28 verse 13 says you shall be head and not the tail You shall be above only and not beneath You shall be above only and not beneath Okay, niya yo ma wa titi la ye un yiko sini sini ile Position matters Ikbo, o she pataki how important is it to be heard? Ba wo lo se se pataki to lati je ori. You understand that by the fact that when they want your picture for your passport. Wo eleyi aye o nigbati won ba fe aworan re pelebe lati lo for your passport. Fun fun aworan re lati lo. Fun we ni se. We ni se. He wearing. He wearing now. All they want to see is the picture of your head. Onti wan fe na ni awonan ori re. They don't bother about the rest of the body. Kosi toka wan pe lu yoku arai. That tells you how important the head is. E yi sofu wan pataki bi ori she se je. And I'm decreeing to every one of you here today. Mo wan sotele si bo kwe yitin beni ilo ni. Young and old. Lo mondi ati lagba. In the name that's above every other name. You shall be head. Ori. You shall be head. Ori. Ori le ma je. To be first is better than to be last. Lati she kokini osan juki e yon wani potore yin lo. When the president is passing through. Nibwe ati a reba nko ja. There's never anything called traffic jam. The road will be clear. If a messenger is passing by, the story can be different. When you read Genesis chapter 41, Genesis you can read it from verse 1 to 43. Genesis 41 from verse 1 to 43. Genesis yori kokan le logo ji ese kini de iketa le logo ji. It tells us the story of how Joseph overnight was repositioned. O sofun wa bi ase shi Joseph ni po pada li asale o jokan. And he became prime minister. Josi di gba ke di oba. The king said that there will be an advance guard. When he's coming, telling everybody, just bow down. 
clear the way for him. As the one who sends me is alive. From now on, when you travel. Angels will clear the way for you. Amen. On the other hand, if you are an ordinary servant, if instead of being the head, you are the tail. You can even do something that is right and be punished for it. Joseph was just a slave. What he did was right. And the wife of the master lied against him. And who is the master going to believe? His wife or the ordinary slave? Say That's why the fellow who was below ended up in prison. From tonight onward. Lati your position will be the one that the Almighty God will give unto you. Amen. But to let you know how important position is, according to Amos chapter 3 verse 3, Amos 3 verse 3, the Bible says only people of the same category can work together. Birds of the same feather flock together. When the incurable is killed, the one who has been killed will leave the company of the Incurable. In John chapter 5, from verse 1 to 14, John 5, from verse 1 to 14, the moment the man by the pool of Bethesda got his healing, he left the company of the sick. And never returned there. In the name that's above every other name. I'm talking by the power of God. Someone here will never sleep in an hospital bed again. Amen. Position matters. If someone is mad, it's not likely to stay in the company of those who are sane. If he's truly mad, they probably send him to an asylum. And when the captive is set free, he will return to a different category of people. In Daniel chapter 4, you can read the whole story. Daniel chapter 4, the old story. When Nebuchadnezzar became mad, nobody told him to go and join the animals. He went voluntarily. But when God had mercy on him, and his 
senses were restored. He returned back to Barabbas because position matters. When a sinner is truly saved, if you are genuinely saved, you will want to be in the company of those who are saved. In Acts of the Apostle chapter 9, you read it from verse 1 to 30. To back Acts chapter 9 from verse 1 to 30. When Saul of Tarsus got saved, he looked for someone who would help him to join the company of Christians. That's why the Bible says if you are truly born again, you cannot be unequally, unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Why? Because position matters. Now, listen to me. It takes God to reposition somebody. We have dealt with many of these cases from Monday. It takes God to take you from the merry clay and put you on the rock to stay. Just as the uh, the man who preached first, I told you, you, yeah. you are struggling to be free, but you could, could not do it on your own. Jesus can reposition you. And sometimes we are struggling. It takes the Almighty God to reposition you from the valley of sorrow to the mountain top of we told you the story of Luke chapter 7 from verse 11 to 15. Luke seven eleven to 15. Luke Thank you, Father. Amen. The Lord said, there's someone here. The only repositioning you are talking about is about marriage. Daddy asked me to tell you, you will be settled next year. You will in Luke chapter 7 from verse 11 to 15, the widow of Nain was in the very valley of sorrow. And God intervened and moved him to someone who could wear the garment of praise for the rest of her life. Allow me to prophesy once again in the name that's above every other name there's somebody here who will never know sorrow again. Amen. Amen. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm trying to move as quickly as possible. It, it takes God to take the barren and reposition her to a level where she will have many children. Like in the case of Hannah from 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 
gege bi ti hana ni iwe samuel kini ori keji ese kokan le logun one who had no child became the mother of six eni ti obi mo ri ti ati pe lagan o wa di eni ti obi omo mefa i thank god for all the testimonies of children born miraculously Thank God for strings and triplets. By this time next year, in the mighty name of Jesus, there will be many more strings and many more triplets. It, it takes God to reposition you from being the one being pursued to become the one who is pursuing your pursuer. Olorun nikan lo le so eni ti an le je eni to le eni to tin le ni igba kan ri like we learned yesterday. Gege bi ati ko la no. It takes God to reposition you from total failure to super success. Olorun nikan lo le so eni to tin ni ijakule repete like in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Thank you, Daddy. Daddy, I show you. The Lord asked me to tell somebody. You will never have cause to complain again. Oh, ni round man, lie, lie. He said, because I will surround surround your life with wonders. Oh, ni ni tori pe mafia polo po yanu ya yireka. I think that should be me too. So I better e, say e, amen to e, that. E, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, e, from verse 14 to 16. E, se, keni, la, de, keni, <laughs> the Lord asked me to tell someone. Oh, join me. And it took my dark for mommy. That your breakthrough will be so big. That you will be a blessing even to your enemies. To bed today we pay Wadi Bukun, Tua Wong Taigon Pelu. In Acts chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16, Apostoli, Apostoli Rikan, we read about Peter there, whose shadow was healing the sick. At the beginning, Peter was a total failure. He was a man who fished all night and caught nothing. But God repositioned him. He became the talk of the town. Now, what is how does God do repositioning? How come God can reposition anybody? Because as we learned on Wednesday, I thank God for the testimonies coming all over the world. According to Jeremiah 32, verse 27, Thank you. The Lord asked me to tell you a story. Then give you a word for it. Several years ago, I traveled to Seoul, Korea. 
to attend uh, a minister's conference. Lati lo si ipade awon ojise Olorun kan. And I was about to sleep in at night in the hotel. Mo wa fe sun loru ni ile ti a fi mi wo si. There was a phone call. Be ni e ro ba ni soro wa wale. Uh is that Pastor Adeboye? I said yes. Says Pastor Adeboye ni yamu ni be ni. We have found your passport. We ati ri we ni na eh. I didn't know my passport was missing. My passport? Then I quickly checked and I found out, hey. The Lord asked me to tell somebody, your miracle will arrive before you know you need it. Amen. Jeremiah 32 verse 27 Our God is the God of all flesh Nothing is too hard for him And also he is sovereign Psalm 115 verse 3. Psalm 115 verse 3. He says, Our God is in the heavens. He does as He pleases. You know, He told us on Wednesday. He said that we heal. Who can stop me? He's the sovereign one, he's the original majesty. And he's going to reposition somebody today. Amen. Whether your enemy likes it or not. Now, it's also the Lord of hosts. Like we learned yesterday, there is no force anywhere that can stop him. So that's why in the text that we read at the beginning, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, 7 to 8, 1 Samuel 2, 7 to 8, Samuel you can raise up one and bring down another. You can pick up a beggar from the downhill. And keep on raising him until he begins to sit among princes. That's why is the one who can reposition. So, but the question now that came to my mind when he gave me the theme for this year's Congress, the question I asked, I said, Daddy, you don't have to answer me, you know. Daddy, you are my daddy, I, I, I'm your favorite son. Daddy, me leje mo si je a yu o mon yi. Why now? Ki lo je to je kwe yi si si yi gan ni. Why is it now you want to reposition some people? E te si to je kwe a si ko yi gan le fe wa shi a wan mi ni po kwa da. And you know what he said? E wa monto so fu mi. He said number one. Kwe a koko. I have decided to do a new thing. You know the meaning of that? Your life is about to take a new turn. In Isaiah 43 verse 19, Isaiah 43 verse 19. Amen. Amen. 
I say congratulations to this fellow. Because God said there is someone here today. In your family, there will be no more wasted lives. Thank you, Father. I saw for 3 verse 19, the Almighty God says, Ah, behold, I will do a new thing. I will even make a way in the desert. Rivers will begin to flow in the desert. You know, it is in the time of hardship. That's when, that's when God likes to prove himself. I rejoice with those of you who are true children of God. As God lives, you will soon be rejoicing. Amen. And then another question that you may want to ask. Because when God is talking of repositioning, first, as soon as I heard it, I, I said, I hope I'm included. It tells me the reason he's doing it now is because there are some people whose miracles can no longer wait. Because there are some people whose miracles can no longer you know the story of the widow of Zarephath? First King chapter 17. Verse 8 to 16. First King 17, 8 to 16. If help had not come at that crucial moment, it would have been too late. That's why I rejoice when I heard God say that help is coming rapidly towards somebody. Amen. And the Almighty God wants me to tell someone here tonight concerning the miracle you are waiting for no more waiting Amen. so we we'll come to the question who needs Repositioning. Is there anybody here today who wants God to reposition him? You see, no matter where you are, God can take you higher still. You remember the story of David? It was a shepherd boy. God repositioned him. And he was anointed king before his brethren. Then he was repositioned to the cave of Adullam. And a lot of uh, people in distress gathered themselves together to him. The Bible says he became captain. 
Then he was repositioned higher. And he became the king of Judah. And he was re repositioned higher. And he became the king of Israel. And he was repositioned higher. <laughs> and he became the father of the king of kings. So it doesn't matter how great you think you are. God can take you higher still. By the time I see you in January, you will not be where you are now. Amen. You can go from sick to healed. You can go from healed to whole. You can move from whole to a healing vessel, healing others. You can move from somebody who he is by touching. And move on to a level where your handkerchiefs will do the healing. And you can move from that even to a stage where your shadow will be healing the sick. Oh, till a lady, do lost Lati Bay and Lossy Billy to Jay will pay. Oh, Gigi and you, my well license. You can move from destitute to comfortable. Benny, only grow new, go align, lossy and it's your con rebale. You can move from comfortable to rich. Only lossy, when it's your con rebale, lossy, go low. You can move from rich to wealthy. You can move from wealthy to prosperous. You can move from prosperous to flourishing. In the name that's above every other name. No matter how high you are today, God will reposition you higher. Amen. Now, so that we can have time to pray and, and go on to other things. What we got require of me? For me to be the one who will be repositioned today. God is sovereign. He does as he pleases. But it's not arbitrary. Everything he does, he does. For a reason. He looks at the heart. He knows your heart. When God suddenly said in Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 3. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Genesis, you read Kijila, I say, Kini de Iketa. And you said to Abraham, I say, Abraham. Those of Abraham, okay, well, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. My book, I'm going to make you great. Mass is all din la. I'm going to make your name great. Mass is all correct din la. I'm going to turn you to a blessing. Mass is all di book. I'm going to curse those who curse you. And if you are in my worry, I'm going to bless those who bless you. I want to bless you for my sure for one. Through you, I'm going to bless the whole world. Nick Barre, my book, who would delay a year. 
What has Abraham done? Ki lo lo ni Abraham unse. Why did God just pick him out of the crowd? Ki lo de to lo ru kan fi da yo da fo la ni awon eniyan. To reposition him. Lati si ni po pada. Because God knew. Ni tori Olorun mo ni. The God who knows the end from the beginning. Olorun to mo pin lati ibere wa. That one day, when I asked this same Abraham, to give me his son Isaac, the only son Isaac that he loves, he will not deny me. So I said, Lord, he said, Lord, in advance, that Abraham is going to be his friend. He knows you. He knows that if he prospers you, you will serve him with the money. Is that correct? Show Tony. You didn't answer me now. Oh, down this is in you. <laughs> he knows that if he promotes you, when you get to the position, you won't forget him. Oh, He knows your heart. He knows tomorrow from even yesterday. Oh, ma, la, la, When he decided to relocate or oh, uh, change the position of David. He said, I have found a man who will do my will. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Acts 13, you can read it from 21 to 22. God knows who will be grateful after he has been repositioned. He knew what he was doing when he chose Solomon to be king. Solomon He knew he would return to say thank you. And not only does he choose people because of uh, the intent of their hearts. He also rewards those who are diligent. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Proverbs twenty-two, verse twenty-nine. The Lord asked me to tell someone. You think you are already at the highest possible level you can ever be. Oroko ti de be de ke bi to le de. The Lord mighty almighty God asked me to tell you trust me. Olorun Olodumare ni so fun o gba mi gbo and I will surprise you. Ma si ya o lenu. He rewards those who are diligent. Oh man, oh man, I want to one fear is she. Let's share one. See us thou a man diligent in his business. The warrior in your two fear is she. Let's share. He will stand before kings, not before me men. Oh, what drew you? What drew you? I want back. You see, drew you? What drew you? I want in your last song. Hebrews eleven verse six. You were a beru. Ori kokan lai say kefa. God says, Hebrews 11, verse 6, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He knows your heart. He knows what you will do in the future. He knows you want to serve Him. Only you don't have the means. You don't have the position. And he wants to reposition you. And of course, 
He answers prayers. Matthew chapter 7 from verse 7 to 8. We Matthew Rikeje as a KJC Kejo. Matthew 7 from verse 7 to 8. Matthew Rikeje as a KJC Kejo. Yes, he said in his word, if you ask, you shall be given. If you seek, you will find. And if you knock, the door will be opened unto you. So somebody is going to ask God tonight. Father, reposition me. And I will show you the kind of good boy, good girl I can be. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Amen. I think this must be me, but I will tell you too. The Lord said there's someone here tonight. He asked you to write it down. He said before the middle of next year, your cup will be running over. Who will he reposition? The one who has a correct heart. Who is determined to serve God. Lord, reposition me. And watch and see. It's looking for those who will diligently seek him. It's ready, it's ready to reposition those who will be hard working. You know, one, one of my daughters was sharing a testimony. That if we knock at a door, many will be open. I am not saying, Thus saith the Lord now. I'm just decreeing. That because, because you are here tonight, you two will knock at one door. Amen. You now walk on and many doors will be open unto you. But that is going to mean hard work. It's not going to reposition a lazy fellow. The lazy fellow will remain lazy. A friend of mine was talking the other day. He said there is a saying that power corrupts. I'm absolute power corrupts absolutely. He said he doesn't believe that. He said what power does is that if you are already corrupt, power gives you an opportunity to show. The one want God to reposition you and place you on a higher level. What are you going to do when you get there? He answers prayers. And he honors faith. He said in Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Mark 9, verse 23. He said, if only you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. If you believe that God is going to reposition you tonight, he will do it. He will do it. If you believe, 
that the man talking to you now has not been lying by the grace of God from all the testimonies. People kept on saying, Daddy said, Daddy is so bad. Daddy said. Daddy is okay. It's not Daddy saying. He said Daddy loan so. It is Daddy speaking. It's Daddy speaking what God has told him. Daddy can so until Allah until Basoni. I thank God for the testimony of the man who said he heard that the blood has stopped. Oh, I do not know for Allah only for a couple of years. Oh, I'm going to be a sucker. Ej, ej, no until Duro. How do I know somebody is bleeding? But when you must have found when you can't be, ej, ej, that the lara. But God knows. To my Allah, no more. And He told me. Oh, she saw for me. Never pass it through. Oh, she saw for one. The same God told me. Allah, no, cannot to what saw for me. That tonight. We let let you. He will heal so many. It will be difficult to count them. The same God told me that last month we must pull down all walls. All mountains must come down go, go, oh, wait, okay. Lati, di to prepare the way for tonight. The same God who when he speaks is done is saying tonight you cry to him in faith he will reposition you tonight. Are you ready to pray? From the way you answer, you can see that you are not sure. Maybe I should ask you the question. When do you want to be repositioned? Uh, at the crossover service in December 31. When are you ready to pray? How are you going to pray? Diligently. Write down your prayer points. Because session one is about over now, so you can move on to prayer. When you are ready, you write down your prayer points. Number one, you want to thank him that he made it possible for you to be here. Because by the time you are leaving this, this holy city, you'll be a different person entirely. Write down point one. You just want to thank him. Number two. You say, Father. Make me a healing vessel. So me di anything we need, son. And I will heal the sick for you. Masi wo and one license of war. Free of charge. Like bo wo. Make me a healing vessel. So me di anything we need, son. I'm not just talking about healing or making me whole. I want to go beyond that. I want to be a healing vessel. And I will heal people for you. Number three. Father. Baba. Let me flourish. And I will be your treasurer. Let 
Let me flourish, Lord. And I will be your treasurer. Number four. Father, promote me. And I will use the position to serve you. Father, promote me. And I will use the position to serve you. Number five. Father, Baba, increase your anointing upon me. And I will rescue those who are perishing. Benny, Massy, John, wanting one shake me back by that cruel and we pan one. Increase your anointing upon me. So if I'm already in Lalori me, and I will rescue the perishing. Benny, Massy, John, wanting shake me back cruel and we pan one. Number six, 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 Father, Baba, give me all round repositioning. And I will give you all the glory. Father, Baba, Give me all round repositioning. And I will give you all the glory. Number seven. It's your own private prayer. Maybe you want a particular section of your life where you want God to reposition you speedily. You have 15 minutes. The altar is open. Come and pray with faith diligently and within the next 15 minutes the almighty God will do something you can't even dream possible in Jesus mighty name we have prayed and so shall it be God will grant your request. Yeah. He will reposition you. Yeah. He will give you all round repositioning. Yeah. And when he has done it, you will not fail him. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.